Hello everyone, my name is Serafi and I'm happy to meet you all. And the reason you are seeing my bare desktop right now is because we are gonna be doing a live ban, risk, ban list reaction video. So the TCG ban list has just dropped. I was busy watching Deadpool and Wolverine when it came out, so I have not seen anything. Um, I've been, and in case you guys haven't heard, I've been like getting back into the TCG. I bought a deck, it cost me a lot of money, and now possibly it's been completely ruined. So I don't know, um, we'll have to see. So before I get started looking at this ban list, let me go over what I think is gonna change and what's going on with the meta. Fiendsmith is ridiculously powerful, absurdly powerful. I have seen the Fiendsmith engine, it is insane. Now. That is entirely because of the Link 1, which is, um, what is it called? I can't remember what the Link 1 is called. The Fiendsmith Link 1 is stupid. And, um, people are saying that, uh, Moon Goddess of the Closed World, or whatever she's called, is the card that needs to get banned, um, because they would not hit Fiendsmith because it's so early, and also because the engine, the Fiendsmith engine would somehow be balanced if Moon wasn't in the game. But Moon is also really new. Moon is still like super new as well. So I don't know that Moon is gonna get hit for uh, just to keep Fiendsmith in the meta for a little bit longer. I feel like they could just hit the Link 1 and it'd be fine. Um, regardless, uh, other people are saying that Appaloosa is gonna get banned just because they banned Barone, RIP. Um, but, uh, But uh, we don't know what's gonna happen. So let's take a look at the list here. Let's see. Uh, all right, so I'm pulling up Master Duel Meta. I don't, I don't know what Master Duel Meta's uh, TCG website is, but off the top of my head. All right. Konami has updated the Forbidden Limited list in the TCG. It is effective from September 2nd, 2024. Okay. Uh, newly limited, newly unlimited, Armageddon Knight from two to three. Cool. Armageddon Knight is a very cool card. Um, when it's summoned, you can send one dark monster from your deck to the graveyard. Uh, I believe that this card was originally banned because of... Cool, Armageddon Knight, not that big of a deal. Um, I believe this card was originally banned because of Isolde, um, and Isolde's really easy ability to mill this. Did Isolde get banned in the TCG? Yes, it did, okay. So now that Isolde's banned, they don't need to worry about Armageddon Knight nearly as much. Um, they have been like releasing Orcist more and more, so, um, you know, uh, and they also unlimited Thunder Dragons as well with Colossus, so they probably want Armageddon Knight to like see more play so that Orcist and Thunder Dragons have the opportunity to breathe a little bit. Um, I think that's fine. I don't think the Armageddon Knight being at three is going to change too much over it being at two. So Next up, we have Red Rose Dragon going from one to three. This is something that was heavily requested. <clears throat> People have been excited for Rose Dragons to be somewhat playable. Let's see. Uh, I don't actually know this card off the top of my head. So it's a level three dark dragon. Uh, if this card is sent to the graveyard of synchro material, you can special summon a rose dragon monster from your hand or your deck, except red rose dragon. Then if it was sent for the synchro summon of black rose dragon or a plant synchro monster, you can also add one frozen rose or one blooming of the darkest rose from your deck to your hand. Cool. Um, so there are uh, rose tenny decks, there are rose tenny sword soul decks. Uh, it sees play in red eyes. Um, it could be good in thunder dragons as well. So. You know, just a solid tuner monster that has a lot of uh, potential. And Black Rose Dragon is not like a deadly card, so it's okay for Black Rose Dragon to see some support. Um, I don't know what plant synchro monster you would use to make this. Uh, I don't know of any uh, particularly amazing plant synchro monsters. I don't know why this card got limited to one to begin with. But I think this will be just a fine effect. I mean, it's not... People are like like holding their decks in their hands these days anyway so drawing from the deck is it's solid but it's not something that you have to worry about too much anymore 
Uh, Kieran is going from one to three. Yes, when Kieran came off the ban list uh, originally, I said that it didn't matter that it was going to one. Like the card could be at three and it wouldn't change anything. So yeah, now that it's now that they've seen it for a format, they're like, okay, magic specters aren't super powerful, so let's just put it at three. That's cool. Performance plush fire going from zero to three. So for those of you that don't know, plush fire got an errata, and uh, that's great. <laughs> Konami needs to do more of that. Uh, there are obvious cards that can never exist because their their effects were written poorly. Um, so, uh, Perform Age Flush Fire, uh, the effect was originally, if this card on the field is destroyed by Battle or Card Effect, you can special summon one Perform Age monster from your hand or deck except Perform Age Flush Fire. They changed this so that it is only activated once per turn. Uh, good. <laughs> That's all it needed. All it needed was to have a hard once per turn and the effect would be completely fair. And now that Perform Ages have gotten new support, it's great to see them getting their Plush Fire monster back. Um, excellent. You know, I, I look forward to seeing if the new Plush Fire, uh, sorry, if the new Perform Age support will let Perform Ages be a meta deck or a rogue deck or something like that. Could be fun. AFD going from one to three. Ooh, AFD going from one to three. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. AFD is not a card that you make more than once, right? <clears throat> Hard once per turn on both effects. Mm. Being able to, like, search any field spell is really dangerous. This is why terraforming is limited to one. It is a lot more work than terraforming, though. Um, yeah, I don't know that people would do this twice, to be honest. So I guess it's okay that it's at three. Extra deck monsters being limited is weird, you know? Really, with extra deck monsters, you either want to ban them or you want to have them at three. There's not really much of a difference, so I think this is all right. Deng Long, first of the Yang Zing from one to three. Okay, uh, when this card is special summon, you can draw any Yang Zing card. And once per turn, you can send one worm monster from your deck to the graveyard. This card's level becomes a sent monsters. If this face card leaves the field, you can special summon one Yang Zing monster from your deck. You can only special summon Deng Long once per turn. Hmm. Um, this is a stepping stone for Yang Zing, Teng Yi, and Sword Soul. Uh, I mean, it's a good effect, and it definitely could see play at more than one, uh, but I think the game is a little bit too fast for that at this point. I feel like I feel like you'd rather just make an 8 than make a 5 and go into an 8 off of the 5, even if it draws you a card. Um, like, running the cards that would allow you to make a 5 is just kind of inefficient at this point. We'll see. You know, this could this could be interesting. I know that Yang Zing has 9 pillars and a few other really good cards that you can search off of Deng Long. Deng Long does see a lot of play in, like, weird combo FTK lists, especially when you can make it off of um, Cupid Pitch. But, uh... Ugh. I don't know how impactful that is for competitive... Um, so yeah, no, I, I don't think this card being at three will change much of anything over it being at one. Again, it's an extra deck monster. Time Seal going from one to three. Time Seal, skip the draw phase of your opponent's next turn. This is toxic. <laughs> I mean, um, so you guys have seen my, uh, uh, what did I even call it? Progression playoffs. My progression series, uh, where we both had, uh, both me and Duke had three copies of Time Seal each. And we just time sealed each other forever. Uh, it was definitely like not fun at all. <laughs> but there are a lot of ways for you to draw without, um, you know, without using your draw phase. So it's a powerful effect. Don't get me wrong, but traps in general are just kind of bad at this point. <clears throat> so yeah, I don't think this will see. I don't think this will change much of anything. If Time Seal does start to see play, I'm sure that the TCG is like more than willing to snap the brace on it and ban it again. It's not like it's a card that makes them any money or that anyone's really particularly worried about. So Time Seal is like a card that's really easy to ban. It, like no one's gonna miss Time Seal if it goes away. So if Time Seal becomes a problem, they can just instantly put it to zero again and no one will care. So yeah, this is a safe unban for them for right now. Okay, Blaster, Redox, Tempest, and Tidal all going from 1 to 2. <laughs> okay, so Dragon Rulers are coming back slowly. Uh, that's interesting. Um, 
Dragon rulers are... Uh, how can you even, like, describe dragon rulers? D-Link is so heavily tied to the chaos theme at this point that the idea of fire, earth, wind, and dragon support is basically unheard of except specifically with the dragon rulers. Um, I definitely like the idea, and of course, um, because these are all level 7s, they work really well in a Kash Tira engine, and I don't think that Kash Tira Dragon Ruler would be, like, that bad. It would certainly be fun, and I definitely want to see, like, more Dragon Ruler decks, um, just because Dragon Rulers have the kind of staying power that makes a game more interesting. So... Even if Dragon Ruler becomes like a huge meta threat, which I don't really see it happening at this point, um, I would actually kind of be okay with that. <laughs> I would be okay with, with Dragon Rulers being a fun meta uh, option. Because, I mean, to be honest, 7 is like, it's a powerful level, but it's not the most powerful level. Um, and I personally would love to play like a synchro Dragon Ruler format. Like, where you just use uh, a level 7 and then, like, a level 1 or a level 2 to go into some cool, fun place. Maybe you, maybe you play Tidal, right? Maybe you play just a pure water deck, you play Tidal, and then you have two level 1s, and you use that to make... Or, yeah, two level 1s, you use that to make Trishula. Huh. Now I'm saying it out loud, that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. That sounds like it'd be a lot of fun. It would be terrible. But let me cook, chat. All right, Lunalight Tiger going from one to two. That is, why? Just put it at three. Are they that scared of Tiger? <clears throat> I understand that Tiger is ridiculous. I, I get that. But they can just errata it, just like they did with Plush Fire. Like, this, is, this card is not as powerful as Plush Fire. It's very powerful, but I don't think that rank four fours are really that dangerous hmm you could definitely like do a lot of link summoning with this but really the problem is that Luna lights don't lock you and they should they absolutely should like if Luna lights maybe like a beast warrior lock would be too harsh but if they like if they locked you into Xyz summoning and fusion summoning, then that would probably be enough. Huh. I think this is a mistake. I think they should have put Luna Light Tiger to three. Um, I mean, putting it to two is fine. It's good. I, I don't think that Luna Light Tiger is going to become a huge problem. It's, a, it's at three in the OCG and it's not that big of a deal. Thunder Dragon Colossus going from 1 to 2. This is very, very well deserved. Um, congratulations to the man. I hope that he can actually start playing the game again. Um, Colossus is cancer, but it's the type of cancer that we deserve at this point. And there's so much draw. There's so much search that Colossus needs to be a floodgate against it just because we need floodgates. Like, I, I, am a, I am a believer that FTKs and floodgates are an important part of a healthy meta dynamic. They're toxic, they're annoying, but they make sure that all the combo players remember that they are the bottom of the food chain, and they are only allowed to exist because of a gentleman's agreement that we don't all, we play, all play floodgates and FTKs. Um, so the next time that your friend at Locals uh, drops, uh, drops an FTK on your face, uh, just thank them for it, because uh, that's how you make sure that the guy who's playing Fiendsmith uh, puts a lot of very weird texts in his side deck that don't bother you when you're playing. Ib going from 1 to 2. Um, Ib is a good card, but Ib, Ib was another card where it was just like, this card had to be banned. Um, and if it's not banned, it's not that good. Because it has hard once per turn on all of its effects. So, um... It lets you draw World Legacy cards. I don't know that you would play two copies of like World Legacy Succession or another World Legacy card just to do this twice. Um, that's kind of like putting too many bricks in your deck at that point. So I feel like Ib is a card that you wouldn't play more than one of in any circumstance. Ava is going from zero to one. Okay, Ava going from zero to one is interesting. 
Uh, obviously, this is a huge card for like Drytrons and Herald, um, which is like not. It's been out of the meta for a long time. Um, Ava has been in the OCG at one for a bit. Uh, I think that this card is definitely like. This card is definitely like more of a problem because. You can use this card with like heralds and other hand trap cards that give you free negates. Um, so it's not a card I want to see too much of, but I think that it being at one is probably a safe spot for it. And I do think that hand traps need to reasonably have like a level of power to stop other decks. Um, so you have to play fair. Like <clears throat> Herald of the Orange Light and some of the other hand traps do need to play fairies. And if Ava is only at one, it's not like you can play like three Avas just just to meet the requirements you would have to play other fairies to make Herald worth it. So that's not so much like, it's not like Ash or Effect Veil or which a card you could just put in your deck. It's it's a dedicated fairy strategy. And I think that's okay for, uh, especially since it's light fairy specifically. Um, I, I'm a Valkyrie fan myself, so, and I like to play Drytron as well. So I don't have a problem with this. I think this is fair, uh, but I wouldn't want to see it go any higher than one. Sengai Ash is going from 3 to 1. Oh my, Sengai Poplar is going from 3 to 1. Let's go! <laughs> Why did it take so long? Oh my gosh, Poplar. Poplar, get away from me. Okay. This card is cancer. This card is so disgusting. If this card is had to your hand, except by drawing it, you can special summon it. And when it's special summon, you can draw a Snake Eye spell or trap. And if this card sets the graveyard, you can play a target one fire monster in your graveyard, place it up as a face-up continuous spell. So Snake Eye Poplar just completely dominated the meta. And Snake Eye Ash, like, was the enabler. So now they're both at one. You can still play the full Snake Eye's combo, but you basically have to draw your Ash, and then your Poplar has to resolve. You know, you still play Snake Eyes, but you're basically re you're more reliant on like Bonfire and other search cards as opposed to just opening the the pieces that you need, and that makes you much more vulnerable to hand traps and disruption. Um, in particular, it makes you a lot more vulnerable to troll because you're less likely to just have Poplar in your hand. I think that's like the idea that they're going with is that they want to make Droll super good, so that uh, Droll kind of brings the meta to a halt. I think that's probably fine, especially because, like, Fiendsmith also would get really shut, hard shut down by Droll, too. So, yeah, um, this is this is a good change. I like this. Finally, we have some, like, good hits on the list. Uh, all this unlimited stuff was uh, was starting to bore me. All right. Uh, number 40 and number Chaos 40, both to one. Oof. Uh, RIP Pickles. Um, this is worse than the OCG ban list, because the OCG ban list just put number 40 to 1. Again, I told you guys, I think that FTKs are like a healthy version of the meta. I don't think that it's a problem that an FTK is competitively viable. I think FTKs uh, basically punish people who play ridiculously aggressive combo decks because they just don't have the right tools to protect themselves in situations where they're getting FTK'd, whereas a control player would. And so I think that FTKs basically encourage more control, more grind strategies that involve a lot more interruption and a lot less combo pieces. Um, uh, still, like, I can understand why, like, in particular, the West really, really hates FTKs, which is kind of sad. You know, I think you guys are all wrong, but uh, I will continue to just spread my joy and love of FTKs on my channel, and that way I can create some more believers. Um... God, just it just it's just so disappointing that they release all this gimmick puppet support and all they do is support burn. Like they they didn't have to do this. They could have printed gimmick puppet cards that had like destruction or um, quick effect negates or something, not just burn. But because they printed burn, now it's literally just FTK or do nothing. So depressing, but I guess it was deserved for, at least for right now. Brandon Fusion going from three to one. Uh, I did not know. That Brain Infusion was still at three in the TCG. Uh, sure, I mean, uh, this card is really, really annoying. Uh, it has a lot of recovery. It has a lot of consistency. Um, and basically, Branded is just a deck where you ash the fusion and that's all you do. 
So making it one means that the ash goes a lot farther, which is good for us. Now we have opening of the spirit gates from three to one. Wow, that is rough. That is a dark you bell hit. Um, oof. <laughs> Okay, uh, I guess I'm gonna have to run three dark beckoning beasts now, and I don't, I don't have three. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go get one. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to go get another dark beckoning beast. Um, I mean, okay. One of the biggest benefits of having more than one copy of ultimate opening of spirit gates is that the dark beckoning beast would draw you it, the opening of spirit gates. Then you could use it as discard fodder for opening the spirit gates' effect, and then return it to your hand with the effect of opening the spirit gates. Basically, opening the spirit gates like. Because you activate it, it draws your Dark Beckoning Beast. Dark Beckoning Beast, normal summon. You dr you add the opening spirit gates, discard it to revive a level 10. Then the level 10 lets you get the card that you discarded back to your hand. It was like the most free value engine ever. So it does make sense that opening the spirit gates can't be at 2. Because really the benefit is playing it at 2. But man, having it at 1 is harsh. Um... This does hurt the consistency of Ubell without hitting the Ubell engine specifically. So it's a hit that I'm pleasantly surprised by. If this is the only hit to Ubell, I think that Ubell will be just fine. But it is going to hurt. So let's see what else we got on the list. Pot of Prosperity to 1. Okay, I think, I think we all knew this was coming. This is going to hurt my Resonator deck, unfortunately. Um, I'll have to figure out his desire is that... Is Desires even a thing in the TCG? Pawn of Desires. Desires is at three still. Okay. Probably swap Prosperity for Desires then, unfortunately. Um, this is fine, you know. Pots cycle in and cycle out all the time. It's just it's just consistency. So uh, they're not like necessary for any particular strategy. So it's fine when they get hit. Sangin summoning going to one. Good. <laughs> I am sick of 10 pi already. Uh, this card is dumb, for those of you that don't know. Fire dragon monsters you control are unaffected by your punts. Activated effects during your main phase one only. That is so dumb. <laughs> that is so dumb. I don't want it ever in, ever in my life again. Like, I want to be able to interact with my opponent during their turn. Thank you very much. Uh, so, yes, putting this at one just means that you have, you're more reliant on searching it, which is good, because then you could just ash it. So yeah. Grass is at one now. Okay. Okay, I see you. Grass is interesting. <clears throat> Why would they do that? <laughs> what deck are they hoping gets buffed by grass being at one? Thunder Dragons? Dragon Ruler, maybe? I'm not going to play Skull Servants in the TCG. Unless it's super cheap. It might it might actually be super cheap, even in a 60-card deck. Oh, Grass has been banned for a long time. I bet it's not that expensive. Oh... I'm tempted. I'm tempted to play just whites. Just just nothing but whites. Ooh. I didn't want to see this. This is making my wallet hurt. <laughs> what do we got next? Skill drain going from three to one. Sure. You know, floodgates. They they want combo to be good. They don't want control or FTKs to be good, so they'll hit these all the time. Um with one skill drain you can still stop the board from working, but you just can't do it as frequently. And it makes back row destruction better, so uh, combo decks will be more reliant on playing Lightning Storm and Feather Duster than ever before. Good. Newly Forbidden. Fiendsmith Lacrima. What? Okay. They just banned a Fiendsmith card. Okay, cool. Let's see. What the, which one is this one? If this card is fusion summoning, you can target one light fiend monster in your graveyard, either add it to your hand or special summon it. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can shuffle one other light fiend monster from your graveyard into the deck. Inflict 1,200 damage to your opponent. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is just an easy way to send your Fiendsmiths to the graveyard so you can fusion summon. Um, I 
think that this, like, this was, this was very much part of the Memento Fiendsmith deck that I faced at Locals. Um, I can't remember how many times my opponent summoned it. I think it was at least twice. So, yeah, banning this card is huge. Um, I'm glad that Fiendsmith has not escaped the, uh, the axe. But now we're in the Forbidden Area, which means that my, uh, my quiver is trembling, chat. Um, are these in alphabetical order? I think so far they've mostly been in alphabetical order. No, they're not. They're not in alphabetical order at all. Oh my gosh, I could scroll down and Appaloosa could be right there. I really don't want it. I don't want to do it, chat. I can't. Do I end, do I end the video right here? Oh no! Come on! First my Barone and now this? Oh no, Apo. Apo, you were too good for this world. So... <sighs> you worked so hard, my queen. You deserve a rest. Sharp, I know we're playing tonight. The ban list is effective on the second. I don't want to hear any complaints when I apo you to death. Next up. Calamity got banned? No, oh, come on! Ugh. It's fine, it's fine. I only have one copy of Calamity, and I didn't really summon it too much anyway. Oh, my RDA deck is suffering for uh, Centurion Sins. This this is unfortunate. Uh, I can just put another... Probably just put another, like, Hot Red Abyss in for this. The extra deck with my Red Dragon Archfiend deck is so flexible, because it doesn't really do much of anything. And that's not really a deck that I'm winning with too much at the moment anyway, so I really have to over I really have to like figure out what the what the weak spots are and, and like create a fix, because I, I am just losing so much with that deck. I have to figure out what's going on. Uh but this is sad. Rest in peace. Beatrice to zero, good. Good. This card did not deserve to exist. Like I, I, I think Foolish Burial is okay because it's at one, but Foolish Burial in the extra deck is just dumb, especially when you can do it twice. So, no. Beatrice deserves to be banned. That's it. Okay. All right. There you go, chat. That's my thoughts. That's my opinions. Um, uh, I think that this is a fine uh, hit for Snake Eyes. I'm looking forward to seeing what Dragon Rulers do. A good job for Thunder Dragons as well. And rip my U-Bell deck. My name is Strafian. I was thrilled to have all of you with me.